Welcome back to this series on how to make a Space Invaders style game in Scratch 3.0. In this episode you'll be learning how to add smooth, realistic motion to the spaceship so that it can be controlled by the player. So let's get started by going to the code editor for the spaceship sprite. Now, when you want to make a sprite move in Scratch, there are two different methods that you can use. The easier way is to use a when key is pressed hat uh, from the events block and then simply add a change x or y by value. This is really easy to code but can result in less smooth motion uh, when the game is playing. It also doesn't work well with holding down the arrow key for continuous motion. A better option is to use a forever loop that contains if blocks and they continuously check if either the right or left arrow keys are being pressed and if so they then change the x positions val uh, value for the spaceship. This results in much smoother motion and allows the user to hold down the arrow keys for continuous movement. So let's go and add this to our spaceship. We need to uh, begin with another event and although I have a when I receive start level I'm gonna make another one because uh, I just want to keep this separated slightly so when I receive, change that to start level, I'm going to kick off a forever loop. Now they're under control because they control the flow of our algorithm, of our game. So when I receive start level, start this forever loop and I need an if block and I'm going to say if, um, if the right arrow key is being pressed. Now that's a sensing because we have to sense the environment. So if key space press is what it says for now but I can change that to any key on the keyboard and I'm going to choose right arrow so if the right arrow key is pressed then I want to change the x value um, of the spaceship now x goes left to right y goes up and down so I'm going to change the x value so for that I go to motion and down near the bottom of motion I've got x position um, but that tells me the x position. I actually want to change x. So I'm going to get change x by 10. And now I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to right click on the if block, duplicate it. I get the whole thing again and drop it in. And this time I'm changing that to the left arrow. Now, in order to make the um, spaceship move to the left, um, I actually need to make, I need to reduce the x value. Uh, because the way that uh, Scratch works is if you imagine a sort of line going down the middle, this might be x is 0, dead down the middle. And then any value to the right is a positive number, and any value to the left is a negative number. So if I want to move my spaceship right, then I increase the x value. But if I want to move it to the left, then I decrease the x value. The other thing I want to do is make sure that when my spaceship or when my game starts, the spaceship starts in the middle. So I'm just going to grab a go to block and I'm going to add it to my other um, start level control. Might as well put it here or I, I could put it here. doesn't really make a difference actually. And actually as I'm keeping all of my motion stuff together, maybe I should put it here. Now I'm just going to set the uh, X to be zero because remember I said that's dead center. And for my y value, well, if I just move this slightly, it'll tell me down here what that is. So that's probably where I want it. And that's y is negative 130. So let's type negative. Oops, I deleted the whole block. Let's bring it back, undo. That's control Z or command Z. And let's do minus 130. Okay, now if I want to give this a bit of a go, I can just click once on the top of this when I receive hat and it triggers it, you'll see it goes yellow and that means it's active and I can now just try it out by pressing my left or my right arrow keys and I can see that my spaceship moves nice and smoothly from left to right. So that's pretty good and actually we could leave it there but I'd like to improve it even more. So at the moment as soon as the player takes their finger off um, the left or right arrow key the spaceship just stops dead um, but it would be more realistic if it had a kind of natural slowdown deceleration before it reached a standstill. Um, now to do this we can alter our movement algorithm to make use of a, a thrust variable which gets uh, set to some maximum value when the arrow keys are pressed, so that's like the equivalent of change by 10, um, but 
once we let our finger off an arrow key, it will continuously, within this forever loop, it will continuously decrease until it reaches zero. That might not make much sense when I explain it, but let me show it to you and uh, hopefully you'll see the improvement it brings. So we're going to need to start off by adding two variables to our spaceship sprite. So we go to our variables options and we're going to make a variable. And the first variable I'm going to make is called thrust amount. And we only need this for the spaceship. So to simplify our game, we're just going to make it for this sprite only. Press OK. And we're going to need another variable as well. Uh, and this one's going to be called the max thrust. And you'll see that your stage starts getting littered with these values, which are really useful when we're creating our game um, because they help us to see, but we don't really want them in the game. So if you want to get rid of them, you'll now have a max thrust and a thrust amount little capsule in the variables with a tick. If you untick those, then they disappear. So we need to set these uh, variables to some kind of initial values when we start the level. So to do that, I'm going to drag one of these set blocks to this start level control. And actually, again, uh, why am I putting it there? I could easily put it down here, couldn't I? So maybe I'll do that. Uh, now we're going to set the maximum thrust value. That's the fastest that our spaceship can go. I'm going to set that to 10. And I'm just going to drag another one of those blocks, change it here to um, thrust amount, and that is set to zero because when the game starts, it's not thrusting at all. It's completely stationary, so it's zero. But the maximum it could go to when I click an arrow key is going to be 10. Now, by using a variable to set the maximum thrust, um, it will make it really easy to change that value later in the game. So, for example, if you think that your spaceship's moving too quickly, then you could reduce this value. Uh, or you might want to add a power up to your game so that when your spaceship touches it, this value increases, maybe goes to 12 or 15 or 20, which would make your spaceship able to move faster. Uh, so by using a variable, it gives us more flexibility as we develop our game later. Right, with those values set, we now need to adjust this forever loop to make use of those values. So we're going to remove these change x blocks. In fact, just get rid of them. And we're going to drag in a set max thrust block into both of those. And when we press the right arrow button, we're going to set, I'm going to change that to be thrust amount. So these should be thrust amount. We're going to set the thrust amount to be whatever the maximum thrust the spaceship is capable of. So I grab a max thrust and plonk it in there. But now for the left arrow, we need to do something a little bit different. Um, remember I said that let to do a left move movement, we need to make the number negative. Uh, well, we can use some maths to do that. So if I take an operator and the multiply operator, then I can actually say, well, I want to take a thrust amount and I want to set it to minus one multiplied by the value of max thrust. Now, when you multiply a value by minus one, you get the negative. So five times minus one is minus five. So this will have the effect of setting the thrust amount for the spaceship to be whatever the maximum thrust is, but negative, i.e. it will move to the left. So once those are in there, we now need to add um, a little bit more code, which is going to set that thrust amount to reduce continually down to zero within this forever loop when we're not pressing the right or left arrow button. So to do that, we grab a set block. And again, it's the thrust amount that we're changing. So we're, we're setting the thrust amount. Now, this is interesting. We're going to set it to be 0 0.8 times itself. So in operators, we're going to grab the multiply one again. And I'm going to set it to be 0 0.8 times and I go back to variables, grab the thrust amount. So this is saying thrust amount becomes equal to 80% or 0.8 of itself. So every time that runs in the forever loop, that's going to be a smaller and smaller amount. If you take a figure and then you take 80% of it and then 80% again and 80% again and 80% again, eventually that's going to get to be such a small value as to be close to zero. And at that point, the spaceship will stop moving. 
Now finally, at the moment, nothing's actually gonna happen. If I were to click my right and left buttons, nothing happens. Um, however, if I show you the thrust amount variable, you will see, so as I hold the uh, left and right buttons down, it becomes equal to sort of eight, negative eight, and you can sort of see it flicking with the interim values, but nothing's moving. And the reason that nothing's moving is that we haven't actually put in a change x by thrust amount block. So let's go back to motion, change x by, and instead of it being 10, we go to variables, grab our thrust amount, drop it in there, and now if I click on the hat again to trigger it, and I try my left and right buttons, as I click uh, or so I press left and right, you'll notice that I get a nice smooth motion. Now one thing I'd quite like to do is stop it from being able to get all the way to the edge of the screen. And to do that, I can add um, a bit of a boundary condition to my if statement. So that instead of saying if right arrow is pressed, go to the right, I'm going to say if the right arrow is pressed and it's not too far over to the right, then go right. So to do that, I'm going to go to operators. I'm going to pull in an and block. I'm going to take my right arrow's press and drop it into the left hand side of the and block and put all that back in the if. And then I'm going to need a less than, which is also an operator. And I need to go to motion and get my spaceship's x position. And here, I just need to put in the value, which is the maximum value on the x-axis that I want my spaceship to be able to go to. Now, it will depend on your game, how big your spaceship is and everything. It's going to be something like 170, 180, and you might need to explore and experiment. Now, for the left arrow, we do just the same. But instead of using a less than sign, we need a greater than sign. and it's going to be greater than probably the same sort of number, maybe negative 160. So click on the start level hat again to trigger it, should go yellow, and now try your left and right, and you'll see if I hold down, it reaches a limit. It can't go any further on my right than that, and it can't go any further on my left than that. Mm, that's not quite enough maybe, so maybe I will make this minus 170 and try that again all the way to the right but not quite off the edge and all the way to the left but not quite off the edge. That's pretty perfect to me. So that's pretty good. We're just gonna need to now get rid of this uh, thrust amount. So again, we can untick that so we don't see it. It's not ruining our screen. And the uh, final thing I want to do is instead of always having to click on one of these blocks to trigger them for testing, um, I wanna make it so that when I click the green flag, my game kind of starts, i.e. my um, star field starts spinning, my animation starts, and my spaceship will move. Now, to do that, it's really simple. We're just going to go to our backdrop, and in the code editor, I'm just going to grab an event when the green flag is clicked, and I'm going to broadcast start level. Now, in future, this is actually going to trigger, instead of broadcast start level, I'm going to set it to be something like broadcast show title screen. But we haven't got a title screen right now, so broadcast start level should do the job and it should kick off everything that's waiting for a start level message. So let's press the green flag and there we go. We've got our, our uh, spinning star field, we've got our animated fire and crucially now I've got nice smooth motion left and right with the keyboard. So that's everything for this episode. You should now have a smoothly moving spaceship that can be controlled by pressing the right and left arrow keys. In the next video, you'll be learning how to add laser fire to shoot the aliens.